cette vision de la France comme nation généreuse, de la France. This vision of France as a generous nation with a vision which carries universal values has been, in those dark times, exactly the opposite of the selfishness of a people which only looks at its own interests. Because patriotism is the exact opposite of nationalism. Patriotism is the exact opposite of nationalism. Nationalism is a betrayal of patriotism. In saying our interests first, whatever happens to the others, you raise the most precious thing a nation can have, that which makes it live, that which causes it to be great, and that which is most important. So with these social problems becoming more and more of an issue for uh, Macron, it seems like he'd rather be president of the European Union than president of France. Well, France's president, Emmanuel Macron, calling for the establishment of a, quote, real European army. Those are his words, a real European army to protect itself from, get this, the United States and Russia and possibly China, especially in light of the U.S. apparent decision to scrap the 31-year nuclear deal. Now, imagine the president of France is calling for Europe to protect itself in large measure against the United States of America. Strange times indeed, folks. Um, uh, just a point about the timing, though. Um, this is all linked to the World War I centenary and the Paris Peace Forum uh, that took place uh, this Sunday, because the thinking here is that after World War I, technology kept advancing, but multilateralism got weaker, and so you had a second world war with even more devastating technology, but the political structures, uh, but the political structures were not there to prevent the second world war. And we're speaking, by the way, on the same day where Germany's endorsed France's call for a digital tax on, on, on that we're, we're reminded of the fact that, well, the internet to a large degree is owned by the United States. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so it's very significant that the U.S. didn't sign this Paris call. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. There are 50 nations, 150 tech companies who have. We think this story is very important. We think we all should be tuned in to what's going on, not just here, but uh, across the pond, as we often say, in parts of Europe and Asia. Trump has pulled out of a number of global treaties from climate change to the Iran nuclear deal and recently the disarmament treaty with Russia. While Macron has repeatedly emphasized the need for a global order and rejection of nationalism. He made the call during Sunday's remembrance ceremony in Paris to mark the 100th anniversary of the end of the First World War. Et il y a 100 ans, nos prédécesseurs 100 years ago, our predecessors tried to build a durable peace. They invented the League of Nations as the first form of international cooperation, but it was brought down by the unilateralism of some economic and moral crises, as well as nationalism. This week, that divide went further when President Macron appeared to call for the creation of a European army. The French President Emmanuel Macron has reiterated his belief that Europe needs its own army, citing one perceived threat as the main reason. On ne protégera pas les Européens si on ne décide pas d'avoir une vraie armée européenne. Mm -hmm. Face à la Russie qui est à nos frontières et qui a montré qu'elle pouvait être menaçante, moi je veux construire un vrai dialogue de sécurité avec la Russie, qui est un pays que je respecte, qui est européen. Une armée Mais européenne. on doit avoir une Europe qui se défend davantage seule et sans dépendre seulement des états unis What are the odds of the Europeans actually getting together and organizing a European army? Well, they are stated very clearly to want to do it by 2025. Uh, they are still expansionist. Uh, they want to remove any member state's ability to veto foreign policy decisions like going to war. Um, he wants to build a United States of Europe, and you cannot do that 
when people have different languages and countries have different histories. It's the wrong approach. I want a Europe of sovereign states that are friends with each other, not one run by bully boys like yes. him. So stripping countries of this also entails uh, yeah, robbing them to a great extent of national identity. So I, I just don't see any country in the history of the world who's only relied on a civic identity uh, without a nationalist component, not a prosperous country at least. But I, I think this reflects this uh, move towards uh, populism because over the last uh, 20, 30 years there's been a huge push towards more uh, globalism and uh, I guess civic ideals while the nation state has been seen as something uh, to be overcome especially in the in the, the realm of this EU project. What is wrong with the Europeans actually forming their own army from Washington's perspective? Again I'm at a conference uh, um, uh, with all sorts of intelligence military people uh, it's an unclassified conference and it's astounding to hear all of the conversations from people like Colonel Anthony Schaefer, who's talked to me directly and said one of the main objectives for the CIA and London House and who I work for is to transition NATO into, into a new war fighting machine. And I said, why? It's a multipolar world. Why are we trying to pick fights when everyone else is trying to achieve a peace and stability? Haven't we learned enough about Syria and Iraq and Afghanistan? Are we really prepared to start a war with Russia, China, Iran at the same time? from President Trump as he was arriving here from the US that he was very unhappy with remarks made by President Macron about a Europe-wide uh, fighting force, a military force. In fact, he tweeted about it uh, on his way here. Das sage ich sehr bewusst auch aus der Entwicklung der letzten Jahre. Wir sollten an der Vision arbeiten, eines Tages auch eine echte europäische Armee zu schaffen. Do you know about statements from France's President Emmanuel Macron? Do you understand the Bible says that Europe is going to have a great army? Well, back on November 6, 2018, the Wall Street Journal had a report where it went over some things stated by France's President Emmanuel Macron. Now, there's an article in the Irish Times that commented that uh, Macron wants the EU to build protect itself from China, Russia, and the United States. And then, I'd like to read a couple of sentences from this. The idea of an EU army, which we have been assured was a paranoid fantasy, was seized upon enthusiastically, not the first time, by Guy Riddlestadt via his exuberant Twitter account. The EU is an expansionist exercise, the ultimate aim of which, as expressed regularly by many of its key architects, is ever closer union, a federal United States of Europe increased centralization, less domestic democracy, the erosion of national sovereignty, increased legislative administration from Brussels, and yes, a European army. Now Guy Bellestat is the former uh, Prime Minister of Belgium. So we've got a situation where people are saying, wait a second, they always act like we weren't really going to have a European army, but now we are. So what's this idea about the United States of Europe? On the other hand, the Germans are also pushing for something called PESCO. Now, most of the nations of the European Union are in PESCO. Matter of fact, uh, I think it's like 25 of them are in it. Now, PESCO stands for the Permanent Structured Cooperation, okay, which is an organization. It formally began on December 11, 2017. So let me read something that uh, German Foreign Policy reported about it. With PESCO, the German government is seeking to strengthen the integration of EU countries' armed forces to build quasi from below a long-term base for jointly waging wars. Aimed at better integration of the EU countries' arms industry, Brussels has established the EU Defense Fund due to be significantly increased. And so we've got a situation where we've got this thing called PESCO that's coming up. Now, what's this idea about Europe and having an army? Is that possible? Is it likely? Well, actually, the Bible says it's going to happen. If you've got your Bible, you might want to follow along. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. I'm going to go to Daniel chapter 11, and I'm going to read 
verse 25. He shall stir up his power and his great courage against the king of the south with a great army. Now if you look in Daniel chapter 11, you find that this he is called the king of the north. This particular leader is a European leader. We have another uh, video at the Bible News Prophecy Channel called, Can You Prove That the Coming the Beast to Come is European? Which you can watch. So I'm not going to explain, I'm not going to try to prove right now that it's European, but the Bible clearly says this king of the north is going to have a great army. France's president just called for a true European army. People are going to be surprised that Europe has risen up because they don't think Europe is actually capable of such things. Now, as far as Europe goes, people look at Europe and don't give a whole lot of thought to what's going to happen, but Europe is going to reorganize. And one of the factors will be it wants to control its own military destiny. Another will be to control its own financial destiny. The United States has upset the Europeans with uh, its sanctions programs, particularly related to Iran. We know Europe is going to reorganize and turn its power over to a dictator because the Bible says so. Specifically, in Daniel, not Daniel, Revelation chapter 17, I'll read verses 12 to 13. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings of the beast. These are of one mind, and they'll give their power and authority to the beast. I'm not going to read all the beast prophecies, but basically, if you read Revelation 13, uh, the whole chapter, actually, you find out this person is going to blaspheme God, He's going to cause persecution to the saints of God. Um, We're going to end up with a 666 control of buying and selling, etc. So this is a dictatorial leader who's going to rise up in Europe, probably because Europe is going to decide it needs a strong man to deal with what needs to be done. Whether it's called PESCO or a European army or EU army, the reality is the Bible says a great army is going to happen in Europe We've seen calls for it in this past week. So that's what's going on over there. This is something that's not covered well by the mainstream media in the United States or by the political leaders in the United States because they don't believe this book. But the prophecies in this book are coming to pass and we're seeing world events align with them right now.